Live. Now let's talk beauty with Stacy Vassan. Stacy's on location this morning with dermatologist Dr. Robert Kaplan. What can our hair tell us about our bodies? This is Let's Talk Beauty and I am Stacy Vassan. We are on location at the dermatology office of Dr. Robert Kaplan. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Kaplan. My pleasure. What is it that our hair can tell us about our bodies? Can tell us a lot. For example, if sometimes if there's an anemia problem or a thyroid mm -hmm. problem, one of the first signs that it manifests by is hair loss. And, uh, and so that has to be addressed. It could also just be a hereditary problem. It could be a new medication that you're taking that causes hair loss. Mm -hmm. And so there are many, many reasons, but you need to find out what's going on. But as, so it's, it's a disorder, say for example, hair does shed 150 strands a day. Correct. So if you shed abnormally or hair is coming out in bundles, it is not to be ignored. No, you really need to find the etiology of it. And again, it could be a thyroid problem, it could be an anemia problem, it could be a medication problem, a hereditary problem. Uh, but you can usually get to the bottom of it and find out what the what the cause is. Basically through blood work or blood biopsies. Blood work, biopsies, all the above, yeah. And medications. Let's talk about medications and how they affect the hair and scalp. Well, several common medications cause hair loss. Blood pressure, pressure medicines, mm -hmm. for example, thiazide diuretics or beta blockers are, are, are really big causes of hair loss and a lot of people are on those medications. Uh, so in certain hormonal therapy, certain steroids can cause hair loss. Antidepressants can cause hair loss. These are commonly used medications and so you have to look at what you're on and weigh the risk benefits of, of every medication you're on. Is there something that you can do to kind of counteract those side effects? Yes, well, we can find out, the main thing is find out the cause. And once mm -hmm. you get the cause, you could address the, what, what can be done to help it. You might have to change medication. Okay. Uh, there's certain conditions like alopecia areata, that there's an immune system shots in the scalp will help that. Mm -hmm. Steroid shots, that helps a whole lot. And, okay. But there, if you can get to the etiology of the hair loss, you could oftentimes reverse it. You know, I get clients who are first time uh, pregnancy and I warned them I said there is a chance that you will lose hair particularly right. around the edges exactly Why is that well it's again is hormonal changes and when there's a major event like a pregnancy sometimes a lot of the hairs go into the resting phase and you get what is called a telogen effluvium particularly after the delivery where you lose a tremendous amount of hair for three to six months the good news about that is almost always reversible right and, and then it comes back after they right. have the baby and the body calms down right exactly uh, Let's talk about vitamin deficiency, like iron and um, vitamin D, those that, types of things. There are some problems with vitamin deficiencies and, and low iron. It can also cause hair loss, mm -hmm. so they have to be addressed. And again, that's easily determined by a blood test. Okay. So, Dr. Kaplan, what are some other hair and scalp disorders and treatments that you find in your office? Well, one of the more common uh, entities we see is psoriasis. Mm -hmm. Psoriasis is fairly common, and we have some new topical steroids that are effective. We have some steroid injections that are effective. And also, if it's particularly severe involving the whole body, there are these new medications that you probably saw on television, the biologics, yes. that really are game-changing. They work very well. They do have some side effects you have to watch, but they work extremely well. And the steroid shots that you, you give, those are particularly for women, aren't they? Women, and, and it helps men, too. It helps men yeah. too. Okay. And children, uh, they have the same scalp but hair and scalp issues as they adults. Can, they can get eczema, they can get, we see a lot of lice, mm -hmm. pediculosis, and that we can treat with shampoos and some prescription medicines. But we're seeing, especially with daycare and kids playing together, we, lice tends to come fairly often. That can be treated. Now, for the first time, it was about 15 years ago, I ran into a problem, which I didn't know with a client, that even existed. You can get yeast infection in the scalp. Right. Seborrheic dermatitis is actually caused by an organism called Pterosporum ovale, which is a yeast-like organism. Mm -hmm. and, it, and, and that's one of the etiologies of seborrheic dermatitis. You get a mild uh, itching of the scalp, and you can get flakiness, and you get redness around the eyes, around the nose, even the chest. And that's caused by a yeast-like organism. Easily treatable. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Kaplan. And thank you for joining us. 
for Let's Talk Beauty. Be sure to visit me at StacyVassan.com. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I'll see you next Monday. We're moving right